Many moons ago, I decided to build a video editing PC, but I didn't do anything until very recently. Now, I am a primarily mobile creator, which means that I film on a smartphone and edit on a tablet or a smartphone. So it's within one mobile ecosystem. And don't get me wrong, mobile video editing has its you know benefits, it's convenient, it's flexible, it's adaptable, you can edit on the go, and I absolutely love that flexibility. If you have an iPad or if you have a Samsung tablet, it's really easy to do that, especially if you have like an Apple Pen or an S Pen. It's like a really convenient combination to just have this with you. But having something like Samsung Dex at your disposal as well is really convenient you can edit on the go. It's a very good compromise, especially if you don't have the budget for a PC right now. Samsung Dex allows you to easily boot up CapCut or KineMaster or LumaFusion and just edit on a bigger screen. And if that's not flexible, I don't know what is. So if you're not using your smartphone or tablet in that way, utilize it. And to be completely fair, people actively working with CapCut or apps similar to that and being proficient in those apps are actually wizards. So you're actually very intuitively learning something that's used by big brands to create content. And most of these apps now have even versions for Windows and for Mac. So you can download them on your machine and just continue editing there. So again, you are creating an ecosystem. But at the same time, there are certain inconsistencies. There are, you know, some stability issues that you might face with apps especially on Android devices. So this is kind of where I was, you know, leading with this, you know, I just wanted a beefier machine because I wanted to get more in depth with video editing. I wanted to learn a little bit more and have a little bit more control, a little bit more power to be able to do the things that I wanted to learn. Now, I did look at pre-built laptops to try and see if there's something that I can just go and buy, but it turns out that price-wise and power-wise, the two things don't actually meet in the middle. You sort of sacrifice one for the other. So I decided to build my own PC for my peace of mind and for that longevity and productivity down the line of, you know, having the flexibility of upgrading the hardware, of changing components and just updating the system constantly when the need arises. Plus, I wanted a unit that's specifically built for video editing and even more specifically for DaVinci Resolve which is the software of my choosing. I find it really exciting. I find it really interesting. There's so many things that you can do inside that. Video editing machines are really expensive. You know, computers are, it can be really expensive, especially if you want to have a decent like uh, CPU and GPU and all of that. But let me tell you something. Having a good, a decent editing machine at the beginning is probably one of the wisest things you can invest in. Even if editing is a hobby, even if it's something that you're currently doing on the side, but you want to pursue in the future or you want to turn into your, you know, daily job, I think it makes a lot of sense to invest into this early on. And this is tied indirectly with learning how to edit and how to tell a story, which is really, really valuable. It's probably one of the most valuable things you can learn early on. Everything else is just, you know, additions that support that. But if you don't have the skills to tell a story, if you don't know where to cut and how to pace your edits and how to construct that story in your timeline, then, you know, you're lacking one of the most essential skills to be a filmmaker or a digital storyteller or just a video creator in general. Take this as a rent-free advice from someone that's been down that path. Reducing that lag, the stuttering, just the render time saves so much headache, saves so much nerves and so much time. One of the things that might throw you off of the whole experience is not being able to edit, not being able to, you know, scrub through your timeline, not being able to see what you're doing just because your machine is lagging so much because it can't keep up with the software, it can keep up with the sizes of the files that you have. So keep in mind what types of videos you want to do, keep in mind what files you will be working with. Having a machine that saves all of that pain 
it just makes the entire process so much more smoother. Now, I don't exactly have the knowledge to build a PC. Even if I follow a guide, the best thing that I would probably do is tie something wrong and then just blow up the whole system. So I had a friend that's much more knowledgeable than me come and help with this daunting task. Nikki, you may have seen him in most of the short films that are on this channel, but he was really kind. To come and help. He was a really, really great help when, when it came to, you know, choosing the components, researching them. And then building the whole thing. So thank you, Nikki. And the scariest part probably that you're thinking about and that you're probably facing right now is the budget. When someone says budget, you know, people just freak out. It's a scary word. It means you're getting money out of your pocket. Like a decent editing PC can cost as much as a, you know, older car or a vacation you know there's a lot of things that you can compare it with but it's you know it's a cost that you need to consider especially early on now the video resolve in itself has a bit more specific requirements if you go to the budget systems website you'd be able to read a lot about what the, those requirements are there's a lot about what cpu to choose what gpu to choose what we did was extensively read through that check the charts that they have provided and try to identify and to choose out of you know all of these kind of like listed components which one meets the needs but also meets the budget so the price for this unit in US dollars is $2,223 or 2,028 euro. It's a little bit pricier, but at the same time, some of the components that are inside the unit are not the latest. So consider that, that if you put the latest then the price is gonna skyrocket and I don't exactly have the budget for that. So yeah. But that being said, the current components that are in the unit are actually serving me quite well. Probably be able to tell a little bit more down the line, like a couple of months and see how it holds up. Currently, I am able to learn Fusion. I am able to do a little bit of behavior, you know, color correction or tracking. So all of these things that you usually are a bit more taxing on your machine. And to kind of like finalize and close off this video, I wanted to share a couple of takeaways from this, you know, entire experience of building a PC. First and foremost, tailor it to your use case. Depending on what you want to use it for, the types of projects, the software that you're going to use, tailor the building of your PC to that. Number two, decide how much you want to invest yourself in this journey. If you have a day job, it might take longer and sometimes that might feel like you're falling behind, that you're not learning fast enough. Everyone learns with a different pace, with a different, you know, tempo. So if you dedicate a couple of hours every day to that, is going to be sufficient enough because you're going to be progressing. It might take a little bit longer, but you're going to get there. I am doing that currently myself. After work, I'm just putting a couple of hours into learning Resolve. If they have a project that they filmed, I work on that, but I try to make it the you know the best possible video that I can. If I want to build up my skill set and maybe hopefully, fingers crossed, I want to turn this into my you know, my job, I feel like having this PC is going to help a lot because it offers stability, it offers reliability, it's a consistent workflow, it's a consistent experience, and I think that's really, really important. Tres, keeping it a bit more multilingual, you know, be prepared to invest. And I don't only mean invest in the PC. If you haven't used a PC up until now, Maybe you don't have a monitor, maybe you don't have a keyboard, maybe you don't have a mouse. So these are peripheries that you might need to invest in if you want to have a PC as well. Or even if you want to use like your smartphone for video editing connected to your monitor, that's also going to require a mouse at least, like at the very least. So when you invest in those things, you are investing long term. You're not just investing for the moment, you are investing for, you know, down the line years. And number four, and this is something that we learned a bit the hard way, but make sure you're choosing the right PC case. Because I don't have enough space in my house currently, I chose a compact case. Fitting all of the cables was a bit of a struggle. So if you plan to build a beefier PC, make sure that you're getting the right case to be able to fit everything inside nice and tidy and like 
save yourself a little bit of a struggle. I am happy with the case that I have. I think it's really beautiful. And now that everything is closed and it's working, it's perfect. I don't have to think about the cables. I mean, everything fits inside this, don't get me wrong. Fits perfectly well and it's beautiful. And number five, just have fun with it. You know, have fun with the research have fun with the building process, have fun with the entire thing, because this is, you're investing in yourself. It's not just an investment in something, you know, material. So yeah, have fun. All right, so this is the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if you learned something from it, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions or you just wanna talk PC building or mobile filmmaking, I am here for that. I will see you in the next video.